Peace and welcome to Faith Expressions. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us reflect on the 18th Sunday in the Ordinary Time. But this year, the 18th Sunday in Ordinary Time falls on August 6. And August 6 is the Feast of the Transfiguration of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so for this Sunday, proper readings come from the Feast of the Transfiguration of the Lord. And so for this year, I want us this theme of the glory of God to see the elements and the forms of the glory of God in our midst, in our own lives, and then become active participants of this glory of God in our midst so that this glory be experienced not only in our lives, but in the world we live in. And we become participants and bearers of this glory, sharing this glory to others. From the readings that we have for this feast of the Transfiguration of the Lord, the Gospel narrates to us the event of the Transfiguration. Jesus called Peter, James, and John into Mount Tabor. And in Mount Tabor, he was transfigured. His face became uh, bright as the sun and the clothes became white bright. The glory of God's divinity is now being revealed. And then when we come to the second reading, St. Peter is speaking that this is not a myth. We are not inventing myths. We really experience according to him. We saw, we are eyewitnesses of the majesty and the glory that was revealed by Jesus Christ. And so we are reliable sources. This is from uh, the second reading. And, and yet this is founded in the Old Testament prophecies. Prophet Daniel in the narrative of the first reading has this vision that some like son of man presented to the ancient one given him dominion, honor, glory, kingship. And Jesus Christ himself has said that everything that the Father has has been given to me. So, so all of our readings for this Feast of the Transfiguration of the Lord speaks of the glory of God in Jesus Christ. And the glory of God in Jesus Christ, He Himself who is God, true God and true man, is projecting, is revealing this to the world, to all of us. Into our time and context, we can ask, do we experience this glory of God? Do we have this glory of Jesus Christ in our midst, in our lives, in our faith, in the church? I will answer yes. Yes. And so I want to give three examples, elements that where we can experience the glory of God. The first one is the trend of the growing devotion to the faith. The trend and the inclination to grow in the dedication and being firm in the faith. You see, in our time and context, there are dioceses wherein they are promoting revival, e eagerness into the faith and living the faith faithfully and firmly. And so their seminaries, the formation houses, for they're increasing in number. Nunneries. Convents, forms of formation for nuns. They're also increasing in number because of the trend of responding faithfully to the faith, calling on for life of righteousness and holiness of life. There is this trend. There is the trend, yes, to live fully Christian life. Instead of being mediocre in Christian life, we have the trend and to be uh, strong in the faith. This is this, there's this trend in parishes where there is encouragement for devotions, especially for the Holy Eucharist, for adoration of the Holy Eucharist. There are more uh, religious groups or spiritual groups that are there for adult faith formation. Yeah. These are the ways wherein we experience and we see the glory of God. Uh, families, families pray. 
Oh, okay, we want, we are going to church. Oh. The whole family goes. I, I like to see the uh, pews filled with the members of the family. There is this trend. And this is about the glory of God. So, the second, the heightened awareness of what is wrong. The heightened awareness of what is sinful. And so there is the trend to fight it, to cast it out, and to put what is right. And so in our time and context, uh, parents are fighting out for uh, the good education of their children. And it must be, whatever is wrong in our society, we cannot just be standing idle or sitting and then watching. Uh, let the moral fibers of our society crumbles. No, we have to fight. We have to uh, speak out. We have to help and support those who are fighting against it in the front lines. And the heightened awareness for what is wrong and then trying to correct it. The heightened awareness for what is sinful and then having the energy and the effort to say something about it. And this is what the glory of God also is about. The glory of God in people is like the light. When there is the light, it shines and whatever is darkness is pushed away. That's the glory of God. And the third uh, form of the glory of God that we can experience in our time has to see it in our own lives. When I can prefer, since it is already time to pray, I have to pray and stop my watching of my uh, YouTube and then surfing in the internet and then enjoying TV. Put it aside. It is good. But you have to put this aside because it's time to pray. When I have that kind of choice and decision, that's the glory of God. When I can be able to stand and leave my comfort zone and go and help someone in need, or I see something that I needed to also give my help, I make the initiative. That's the glory of God happening there right here, right now. And that is why for this 18th Sunday in Ordinary Time and this uh, Feast of the Transfiguration of the Lord, let these forms and elements of the glory of God in our lives, in our midst, in the church, in our society, be promoted. Let us be active participants. Let us be agents to bring about this glory of God and to promote and to share this and to propagate this into the world we live in. In this Mass, let us ask the Lord that we be always enthusiastic about our, our faith. We always be energized in talking about our faith. We be inspired always to get out of our comfort zones and become bearers of this uh, glory of God. God bless. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you for listening. And please subscribe if you have not done so. Give us a thumbs up and share this video to others.